hi guys welcome to PyJango tutorials so as you know in the last video we have created our registration form in react.js and that's where we left off in the last video so from this video we will officially start creating our very first api for registration so in this video we'll implement views and logic for that and uh, for login as well and in the next video we will sort of consume or hit those api from our react.js application and register our user and after registering we will uh, redirect user to the login page and use the login api for logging in the user so these all things we will do in the next two videos and from there we will proceed on further so uh, as for our backend project, we have created our serializer. We have created our custom user model as well and serializer. Now we have to create our views for this so that we can register our user. Also, guys, just like Django, in Django REST as well, there are different ways of creating your views. Just like in Django, we have class based view and function based view in this also we have function based view as well as class based view for some reason i like to uh, stick to function based view but things will get some sort of easier when you use class based view but i like to use function based uh, view so i'll stick to that but if you want i can help you guys out uh, with class based view as well uh, it's very straightforward and very simple to set up so if you want just let me know in the comments and i will make a separate tutorial or, or i will provide a proper documentation or i myself will provide pdf or cheat sheet that i have created so just ping me up in uh, telegram or just write the comment and I'll, I'll share that pdf with you guys so moving on let's create our very first view that is for registering user so uh like we are creating api so we don't need this render function so let's clean our file uh, so very first thing we need is uh, for making function based view we need something called uh, api view decorator what is this i'll explain in a bit so what we can do from rest framework dot decorator import api view this actually also from rest framework dot uh, response i guess import response class so this class basically help us to uh, json serialize the response that we are sending so this class actually take care of that the response we are sending to the front end is actually valid and can be understood by the front end so this takes care of that and we also need our serializer so we'll do from dot serializer import we name our serializer as user serializer so these are the basic things we need so let's write our function i'm gonna name it register user and this will take request First thing first, we'll define our serializer. So serializer equals to user dot uh, user serializer and we'll pass in the data. So data will be request dot data. So everything that we are sending from the front end as a form input or form data will have access to that in this request dot data uh, dictionary. Uh, so this request is actually a dictionary format data type that contains all the information about the request so it contains all the headers it contains all the information about the uh, about the device where we are getting requests so in that request we have access to this data as well so what we'll do first thing just like with our forms uh, like we do form dot is valid with serializer we have serializer dot is valid and this will take care of all the validations 
uh, default validations as well and the validations that we have set on our own. So if you want any specific kind of validation, you can do that in your serializer as well. And this, when this serializer dot is valid is called, it will check for default and this uh, validation that you have specifically asked to do, it will check for that as well. So once it is true, all we can do is serializer dot save. So this will basically commit the changes in the database. And if this is true, and the data saved successfully, we want to return something, return a success response or anything. So in our case, we'll just uh, return this newly created or newly registered user. So I can say serializer.data and we have to give status also. So I can like, uh, I don't know whether you know or not, but whenever post request is successful, or something is inserted into data uh, in in the database we get a status code uh, status code called 201 created so i'll return that only and let's say if this is not the case so i'll just return uh the response class we have serializer dot errors as well and in this case i'll return 400 of the status code that some error has occurred and this sort of thing once this is done i can come to url and set url for this so what i can do is from accounts dot views import register user and path i can give uh, let's give it a path of register only register user and let's give a name of uh, register now once this is done our basic configurations are all done so we are almost ready to test it out but before that i need uh, we haven't still run our migration so first thing we have to run our migrations and then uh, we are good to go now, uh, also one thing we have to, in our settings, we have to explicitly define that we are using custom user model and not the default one. So we have to give one uh, variable or user model where we have to define the uh, user model that we are uh, using. So I can say accounts dot user. In accounts, we have our user model. That's what we are using as our custom user model. Now, I also have to register this app in my installed lab so that Django can identify this app. Now we are good to go. So let me just open up the terminal or I can just go in the folder. Yeah the backend and first thing first so i have i think this was chat that right on the list Okay, I have these packages involved in this, uh, installed in this particular virtual environment. Yeah, so we are good to go. So I can say py when manage.py migrate. Okay, py when manage.py migrations. Okay, our user mode model is created so i can again run migrate okay now i can say python manage dot py make my uh, sorry not make python manage dot py run server okay our server is running so we are ready to test our api very first api so i'll use postman you can use any uh, tool you want 
nowadays there is postman's extension available in uh, visual studio as well so you can use that as well but i already have then this installed so i'll use this only uh, this will be a post request and the url will be this uh, slash register and my body will be text will be json and my body will be i have to give email so let's give email as anshu at the rate email.com then i have to give password let's give a b two nine let's give first name first underscore name actually and let's give this anshu and the last underscore name wow. okay let's beautify this now we are ready to test this so just send the request okay we get error page not found okay that's strange register so page not found basically means we have problem with our url i guess so let's check that okay here it should be slash now once the server restarted we can test it okay again some error happens and that is csrf token missing that's strange. Yes, our token missing. Okay, yeah. So, like, I wanted to tell you about, uh, tell you guys about the decorator that we have imported. So, this is the decorator with which we can create function based view in our Django REST. So, I have to say at the read API view, and in this we have to give the list of functions or list of HTTP methods that this function can invoke. So if you don't know, there are basic uh, five or six types of HTTP methods, namely post, put, delete, patch, get, head and options. So these are the basic one. Uh, so we have to give them in the comma separated list. So like this function I know will always look for post request. So I can just give this post. Now let's suppose you want this function to accept get request as well. So you have to give that like this. Otherwise this function won't accept get request. So if I delete this and if I send get request, then method not allowed or something like this will happen. And I want that actually. I want uh, only those requests which are acceptable This by this function should be invoked. So I'll just give post only and this we will change according to our need in the future video but for now I want only post request so let's send this now okay now we get attribute error user has no uh, attribute objects and this is occurring in line 212 in serializers okay so get user model dot object start create okay in uh okay so this should be objects then only we can use objects otherwise we i have to use here get user model dot object so this should be objects now once our server reloaded if i send the request yeah you can see that i successfully get my data that means this user has been created now if i again send the request let's say then i am getting user with this email already exist which is the appropriate way uh, this should be the behavior that we are expecting so and we get error as well uh, status code as well 400 bad request now if i change one zero and send the request user is created and this time we are getting getting status code as 201 created so our register uh, API or register backend API is created. Now we can 
consume or hit the, this API with our front end. Just the way we are using Postman to do it, we will use React.js to do it. And uh, similarly, we can create login API. And so that's all for this video. Uh, in the next video, we will implement log logic behind login view. And then we will start with hitting these APIs and consuming these APIs using React.js. So once again, thank you so much for watching guys. And please do like, share and subscribe and share as much as possible. And if you're learning anything out of it, do consider supporting my channel. Also, like I said in, uh, earlier in the video, if you want access to that cheat sheet that I have created, just comment in the, the comment section and I'll uh, paste the link or provide a drive link for that and you can access this from there. Uh, also, so that particular, so that particular PDF has all the necessary questions that might be asked in the interview and all the necessary cheat sheet uh, that you need one day before your interviews or for a quick prep time, that PDF will be really helpful. So thank you so much for watching guys and see you in the next video.